Every spring and summer, we get a lot of phone calls from customers saying that their AC isn't working. A good portion of those calls are for a common repair. Their capacitor has failed. If your technician has told you that your capacitor has failed, it's definitely one of those items that you're going to want to replace. And I'm going to tell you why in this video. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. So I want to give fair warning to everyone watching this. If you're watching this video with the intention of changing your own capacitor, they carry a lot more voltage than the typical 240 volts that runs through the air conditioner. Capacitors can and will shock you even when the power is turned off. Serious injury and death can occur as high voltage doesn't mix well with the human body. So this video is not intended to teach anybody how to install or replace a capacitor. There are plenty other YouTube creators that will explain that for you. I recommend having a real HVAC technician handle this repair as they know how to discharge the capacitor properly so that no one gets injured. A capacitor is a storage bucket of electrons that is constantly giving itself up for the motor it supports. And they don't make them like they used to either. Capacitors made in the 60s, 70s, and 80s were designed to last a long time. As a technician, I still come across these late model air conditioners and I'm amazed to see that their capacitors are still running just fine. That's kind of unheard of these days. Capacitors today are typically designed to last five to 10 years. There are definitely some brands of capacitors that are made better than others. And it's up to your HVAC technician to find those good brands and use them in the best interest of you, the customer. I've seen caps that only lasted two years. I know of certain brands of air conditioners that are installed brand new and two or three years later, we're replacing the capacitor. We use Mars brand capacitors because they're made in America and I personally believe that they last longer than others. There are several other brands to use out there, but we don't switch it up and use other brands just because we happen to be near an HVAC supply store that sells those cheaper capacitors. Most of the motors in your air conditioner can't run without a good capacitor. Like I said, they support these motors. They help the motors start and run efficiently. Some people have gone out to their air conditioner and noticed that the fan wasn't spinning on their AC like normal. So they get a stick or something to reach into the fan shroud and try to manually get the fan blade to start spinning. And it works now. This is a classic sign that the capacitor for your fan motor is bad and a good example to you why these motors can't start and run efficiently without a good capacitor. And we can't just put any old capacitor in there either. It needs to be the same exact size recommended by the manufacturer. If it isn't, the motor might start, but will operate out of balance. It causes an uneven magnetic field around the motor, which can make the motor noisy, make it work harder, which raises the cost to run it, or just cause the motor to burn out altogether. Now, there are differences in a typical dual run capacitor that normally comes in your AC and a start capacitor that can be added to your system either by the manufacturer or at your house by a technician. I'll explain those in a different video and try to attach that video when I make it at a later date. But for the purposes of this blog, I wanted to answer this question that my best friend Matt asked me the other day. And I thought it would make a good question to answer for other people out there. If your capacitor has failed, please don't try to run that part of the system. It'll only cause more damage to the system, which might force you to replace a bigger, more pricier part or the entire system. So just be patient. Hopefully your technician has one on their truck already. They usually will. Some of you folks out there changing these out on your own should really be careful. Capacitors carry a lot of power and will strike before you know it. So that's just my last little bit of warning to you DIYers if you try to navigate this repair on your own. If you are buying these parts online because of the price, sure, they might be cheaper, but that's nothing compared to getting injured or possibly ruining a more expensive part because you didn't hook it up right. If you're paying the average price of $100 to $300 for a capacitor from your technician, depending on which part of the country you're in, it's because you're paying for that company to have that right one on their truck and install it for you right now. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating, Air and Solar. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.